my god, I'm still tired. Uh, everybody keeps telling me, you've got 100,000 subscribers, and I'm like, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> everybody keeps telling me that, emailing me, like, you gotta, okay. <laughs> um, I never asked anybody to subscribe. Um, yeah. I'm a different person. I really am. I guess most of you have figured that out if you watch more than one of my videos. What if you could say, talk about the stuff that every little crazy ass photography channel and little stupid, stupid, pathetic magazine has talked about a thousand times, but never really explained? Okay? We really have uh, three things. By the way, ISO, unlike old ISO, which were physical sizes of uh, silver halide crystals on film, ISO has no connection to exposure. By the way, ISO is applied gain. So what is the exposure triangle? Really simple. Let's, I'm going to make this really, really simple, and I'm going to be talking about the exposure triangle. Exposure triangle is gain and time and S and R, which is signal-to-noise ratio. Most people don't know, like, well, what's signal-to-noise ratio? You ever tuned in your radio and got a crappy faraway station that you could barely, barely hear it? Like, you get halfway here and the rest of it was... That would be like bad SNR. Or a really tuned, like, 5x5 five five station. Tuning in, boom, crystal clear. That would be a really good SNR. So now you know what signal-to-noise ratio is. Pretty simple, right? I think most people could understand that. Let's talk about four different things. Lens efficiency. Obviously, like a lot of super zooms that have an enormous amount of glass. In other words, the light that goes from hya that gets shot out of hya is an issue on some lenses that have way too many... Dip this is also the reason why, and it pisses me off, that if you go on to any of these places, like, why is a prime lens better than a zoom lens? And they'll go, just because it is. It's like, well, why? Because a prime lens is better than a zoom lens, generally speaking. Well, why? <laughs> yeah, right. They don't know the answer. Too much glass. Glass is a capacitor. Glass is also an insulator. I don't know if you know this or not, but light is electrical. Okay? Longitudinal, dielectric, transverse, electrical, magnetic. So, lens efficiency, right? Right? Lens efficiency, number one. Aperture or gain. I think we all know about aperture gain. Okay, this is a lot of light let through. This would be like f1.8, f4, 5.6, f22, right? We understand this simple thing? Okay, aperture gain. Everything in exposure is gain in time. And also SNR, which translates into SNR. Signal to noise ratio. Same thing as on the radio. By the way, there's no difference between a digital camera and a radio. They both tune electromagnetic signals, right? An antenna is just like a lens. Uh, the receiver processing unit like your camera, which is an image processor. Number three, we also have another aperture, except that's time. You ever have temporal aperture? Time is, of course, an aperture. One one-hundredth of a second is a temporal aperture. One second exposure is a temporal aperture. Okay? Time is also an aperture. So we have two apertures. We actually have the physical aperture in the lens, and we have a temporal aperture. Number four, we actually have native gain or the aperture on the sensor. It would be pixel pitch, right? Also, it's efficiency. There are also little lenses just kind of like this, millions of them, over top of the photo sites. Those are called micro lens array. There's, there's like, last I counted, there's like 40 different micro lens array designs, many of which are patented themselves. Pixel pitch, micro lens design. So we have four things, okay? Lens efficiency, got a crap load of glass between hya and hya, right? Lens efficiency. Aperture, the aperture in your lens, right? Okay, f8, f12, f22. Time, a temporal aperture. You know, it would be gain. Both of those are apertures. Both the shutter speed and this are an aperture, right? One's an aperture of time, the other one, one's a temporal aperture, one's a physical aperture, right? Number four, native gain. Native gain on this, uh, the sensor, right? So, let's talk about where this becomes important. Let's make it really, really simple. I'm trying to make this video super simple and explain it in a way that no one else has explained it before except make it really simple. Physical aperture and temporal aperture, and then we have lens efficiency, and then we have the native gain on the sensor, right? 
One, two, three, and four, all four of them, are all gain, which translates into SNR, signal to noise ratio. If the efficiency of this lens sucks, that translates into good, a bad, good or bad SNR. The aperture translates into SNR. The, uh, the temporal aperture, i.e. the shutter speed, that translates into SNR. And the native gain on this, big eyeballs on the sensor versus little eyeballs, all of that translates into SNR. SNR translates into the ultimate, because your camera is not just a sensor and a lens, it's an image processor. There's a lot of other stuff that occurs after the sensor, like AD converters, SNR firmware, signal processing. Camera is not a sensor. Everybody thinks, well, what sensor is in your camera? And I'm like, who gives a crap? I want to know how good the image processing is of the camera. But that's a matter for another video. Number four, native gain of the aperture translates into dynamic range. This and this alone translates into dynamic range. Okay? You want to know why the dynamic range, unlike the Fujifilm GFX, is so awesome? You know, basically like a stop and three quarters better than an Icon D810. And the Phase 1, which is even larger, it's not that much better. It's like another stop and a half better dynamic range than the GFX. Much larger sensor, but We've kind of reached the limits of uh, dynamic range. So, number four specifically, the native gain here on the sensor translates into dynamic range. DR exists right here. Um, SNR, signal noise ratio, as I just told you, translates into one, two, three, and four. Efficiency, the lens, the lens aperture, the temporal aperture, the shutter speed, and this. Number one. And number four, i.e. lens efficiency and native gain on the sensor. So these two things translate into micro contrast. Okay, you can have a really good one of these, really bad one of these, and not so hot micro contrast. When you take a low element count lens and stick it on a medium format sensor, oh my god, you can shoot a black and white image that will just make your crotch melt because the micro contrast is so damn good, you will just cry for your mama. Mama! <laughs> Um, another misnomer is that uh, photo sight clipping, clipping or specular clipping when it comes to dynamic range, it has nothing to do with light as a volume. These idiots of pseudoscience keep thinking of light as photons striking, a, uh, striking the sensor. It doesn't work that way. It, um, so clipping or, uh, or overcapacitance has to do with charge. And I'm going to talk about that in the second video. So the notion of too many photons equals sensor saturation, i.e. clipping, like clipping a specular highlight, this is BS. However, it doesn't matter which way you look at it, the result is the same. But the truth of the matter is it is overcapacitance in the charge is sensor saturation or actually clipping. I hope I made that really simple because, I mean, that's how all well digital cameras work. We're talking about lens efficiency, talking about their aperture, Talking about a temporal aperture, which is your shutter speed, and then we're talking about the native gain or aperture on your sensor. So there's three important factors that translate to various aspects of those four things. All four of them translate into SNR, signal to noise ratio. As I told you, signal to noise ratio is the same thing you talk about a crappy signal on your radio that's really far away versus a really high def signal that's like being beamed a mile away, you know. This is 94.5, playing rock, hot, tipsy, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Number four, specifically, the native gain on the sensor translates into dynamic range. How big the eyeballs are on it and or the efficiency of that sensor. Number one and number four, lens efficiency and native gain on the aperture translates into micro contrast. Micro contrast is intertonal gain. What the hell is micro contrast? People have been calling it Zeiss pop or lens pop or people have been calling it all sorts of things now for decades. The easiest way to explain micro contrast is imagine a pencil drawing of someone's face, right? All those little fine shading that indicate light, that would be micro contrast as far as the image is concerned. Those low gain signals. This is where big eyeballs and big ass sensors come into play. Also low element count lenses. This and this and proper exposure, ETTR, exposure to the right, translates into incredible micro contrast. You take a low element count prime lens 
It's really efficient and stick like a medium format sensor behind it and take a black and white shot. The image, you know, depending on the composition, what the hell it is you're shooting, the image will be, oh my god, that's awesome. That's micro contrast. And those are the two sources where micro contrast comes. Lens efficiency and sensor gain. I hope I made that abundantly clear. I think I made it pretty simple, short and sweet, kind of, sort of. Explained it a lot better than other idiots do in a more expedient fashion, even if I did repeat myself. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, drop me a buck or two. Tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Because I'm here to help make things simple, clear things up. I think I made this simple. I think I made this simple. I'm going to make a monocle out of this. Or, 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 what's it? I actually saw someone like 10 years ago with a monocle. You know what a monocle is? I said, dear fellow, I said. <laughs> I can't believe I saw somebody with a monocle. Ah, does anybody use a monocle anymore? Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Catch you later. Adio, dos vidanya, uvidim se paka, all that stuff. I'm still exhausted. Bye. Bum, ba -da -ba -bum. Ba -da -la 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 -bum.